Hey everyone, Jenny here. Welcome to your energy reading for this week. So the three decks I am using are the Energy Oracle decks and we'll start with those. Uh, see what energy we're working with for today and this week ahead. Um, and then I have the whoop, dropping stuff <laughs> Archangel Power deck. Let me just pick up the book. That was that's what fell. All right. And the lastly, the wisdom of the hidden realms. See what wisdom we need to uh, to know in order to work through this energy. Okay. So as I'm shuffling and picking the cards, take this time, take this moment to you know go over anything that is bothering you that maybe you still have questions to um, ask your guides ask the universe whoever you you pray to uh, for an answer during this reading you know and just you know so you know not not 100% of this reading may resonate with you take what resonates with you maybe there's only literally one sentence that I say through this entire video and that's what you need to hear. And if so, then that's what you need to hear. <laughs> okay. So what energy are we working with this week? I'm going to just shuffle all the cards now. Figure it's easier to do this in the beginning. And if I feel that I need to pull more after, then I will. Last one, what wisdom do we need to know? Do we need to accept to make it through this week? Okay, so I'm going to begin with the first energy card. We have here a number 30. So if number, if so, literally if the number 30 sticks out to you or the number three, because a lot of these um, double digit numbers can reduce down to a single digit. We have here the garden and the gate. And if you look, I'm going to hold it closer. This woman stands just outside of a gate of, well, it looks like a beautiful garden. Of happiness quite honestly I believe there's even like a birdhouse above her yep a couple of butterflies and she's even holding a basket of flowers and there's a big field off in the distance if you can see the butterfly butterfly I'm looking at those butterflies and they're both going in opposite directions and then I look at her and I feel she's sort of contemplating She's contemplating which way to go, what step to take, if she should be doing this or should not be doing this. Or, you know, and that could be in regards to, <clears throat> we'll say a project or an event coming up or something with work. Or we'll say in regards to a relationship, do I stick with this? Do I let it go and move on? This, is a, this card represents a sense of contemplation. And I feel she is outside the gate, kind of like she has one foot already set out the door, right? But the gate itself, there's no lock on it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to hold it right up. But there's no lock on that door. I should say those doors. So she can enter 
that gate, that field, that garden, anytime she actually wants to. And while, the, while there is some flowers, okay, around her, there's a lot more, there's abundance beyond the gate. And I feel she needs to just make a decision. So I feel that may relate to you, that may resonate with you, that you just need to make a decision on either staying where you're at or moving forward. And I feel moving forward will allow you the abundance that is beyond the gate. Okay, you have an open field here, open garden, things are blossoming and in bloom already. Abundance is yours. You just have to make that decision and decide A or B, which one leads to the abundance. I feel deep down intuitively, you know what, I don't really want to say what you should do. The universe, your guides, your angels, whomever will support you no matter what. You're supported no matter what. But it's kind of like your future then gets shaped based off of the decision that you make. All right. So consider that. I'm going to pull the angel tarot card that goes right with it. So to tell us a little bit more about the garden and the gate, we have here Page of Raphael. A new emotional situation messages regarding relationships or social invitations great intuitive insights okay so this may relate to you on a more social or romantic level maybe this involves you and your divine counterpart maybe you are trying to see if either someone you are with or just someone you know is in fact your divine counterpart i'm not going to use the words twin flame or soulmates or even karmic soulmates kindred spirits i heard i i subscribed to another channel um and she uses the word divine counterpart that actually that term resonates with me very well and i feel a divine counterpart is all of those things they're sort of i don't want to say your other half because then that would kind of mean that you're not exactly whole <laughs> but for a lack of a better term okay divine counterpart to me is like your other half the other person that sort of completes you okay and i put that in quotes <laughs> just for a lack of a better term so you kind of understand where i'm going with this sorry if the video is a little dark i can't really I'll try an editing to lighten uh, it up, especially at the top here, but I don't know if I'll be able to. But so I feel like this sort of emotional situation you're going through right now, I'm hearing is something for you to learn. This is a lesson for you both to learn. And maybe this emotional experience involves a separation of some kind. Maybe it involves a separation coming to fruition. Everyone is on their own path. Sometimes we have to figure out the lessons individually and then come together as a couple. Sometimes people can actually work it out as a couple, but that's not always the case, right? So in relation to the garden and the gate, the emotional, the abundance, I'll say, the abundance is through a heart-centered relationship. Does that make sense? Working out what you want, what you're willing to work for, will lead you to making the decision to whether to step through the gate into abundance and everything that you want or not, or let it be for now. I'm gonna see what the wisdom of the hidden realms have to say about this. The prison waif, self-sabotage, poverty consciousness. Now. We have all sabotaged relationships and things that we want. Let's be serious. We would not be human otherwise. We have all done it. And in fact, some of us are probably serial sabotagers, right? There's probably a hidden message in there for me. <laughs> so, but this, I'm also looking at this poverty consciousness coming from a space of lack that you or your divine counterpart 
does not feel worthy of, of maybe being in the relationship or of receiving everything you want out of the relationship. Maybe you have dealt with um, worthiness issues in the past, uh, whether just through just yourself or through family, um, past relationships, that really maybe you have built up everything that you want and you're on this sort of war path, like, no, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to have, and if you can't give it to me, oh well. That does stem from um, a poverty type of consciousness, though. But at the same time, it shows you what you want and what you're willing to work for or not work for in order to get it. And that's what you have to decide. If you're, if you're willing to work for it, because I'm hearing it's going to take effort and it's going to take work to actually get what you want. It's not going to just be handed to you as awesome and as easy as that would be. That's not the case. So the energy for this week is, to, well, I say one of the energies, because I haven't pulled the other cards yet, is to really decide what it is you want and what you're willing to work for. I mean, if you're not willing to work for it, if, if, if the other person really does not matter to you that much, then you're not going to put the effort in. And that's just how it is. That's something you have to accept, acknowledge and accept. Okay, well then move on. Work on yourself and work on the things that you do want. I'm going to pull the other energy card here. It talks about abundance, which I said is just beyond that gate, the blossoming of abundance. And I feel this is right at your store doorstep. What you want is literally at your door. It, it's right there. It's, it's a, in the palm of your hand. Maybe you're being too critical. You're worrying too much. So you're sabotaging it. Or you don't realize it. You don't see. Or maybe it's not really being fully shown to you that what you want is basically at hand. Now, what angels, what does the angels have to say about this? Five of Michael. The situation doesn't serve you. I can't read it this way. Release your attachment to the outcome. Consider taking a more uplifting approach. So I look at this. He's holding this. Well, it's more of like a horn. But I'm kind of looking at it like a broom. Like he's sweeping away what is no longer working for you. It very well could be a relationship that is no longer working for you. It could also be the poverty, if I can pull the card out, the self-sabotage and poverty consciousness mindset that is no longer working for you. After all, the last sentence says, consider taking a more uplifting approach. So look at things from a different perspective. If something isn't working for you, take a moment to look at it from a different point of view so that maybe you can go about it a different way. And if you need to ask Michael to help, Michael is, Michael's my, I say my guide. Um, he's been with me since birth. He's like my protector guide. And I talk to him all the time. I vent and I yell at him all the time. <laughs> but he is legit. He knows what's up. His energy is very protective for that matter. He's very good though at getting things done and removing things that just really aren't in your highest and best. Okay, so if you need to, if you believe in angels, pray, meditate with him, see how he, ask him for his assistance this week. Be specific on what you want to be assisted with and ask him to help either bring it in or clear it out, whatever it is. But I feel like that's like a decision you have to make, bringing back to the garden and the gate, okay? The wisdom, the hidden wisdom with this is the Desert Prince, Survival False Promises. I feel like these cards relate to my life right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, actually two words I hear with this actually is false hope. You're in a space where you don't know what to do, right? You're in a space where you don't know what to do. 
you're not seeing how good the future can be. You're staying stuck. You're replaying the past. You can't get past the past. So it's affecting your present, which will in turn affect your future, right? Because the future depends on the present moment. So what didn't work out for you before in the past is coming back to light now, most likely so that you can heal from it. That's generally why things come back around, <clears throat> why karma comes back around the way that it does sometimes. It's so you, older with fresh eyes and hopefully a new perspective, uh, have gained a little wisdom along the way, can look at old wounds differently and hopefully are more mature to, to heal from it now. But if you're dealing with someone who honestly offers false promises, then they are not in your highest and best interest right now. Because, well, a false promise is an empty promise. It's not even a promise. It's not. It's just, oh, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you I can do this, but no action to back it up. And if that's the case, then yes, you do need to make a decision on if you really want to deal with energy like that. Maybe you're the one being like that. I mean, I hope not, but <laughs> sometimes you have to take a hard look in the mirror, right? The energy. Okay, this all kind of goes in line. Maybe this is what you're feeling right now. Broken hearted. You have a heart here, the broken line. Now, there is a teardrop at the bottom. Now, I look at this card. Yes, it is a broken heart. But not broken in the way that it can't be repaired or can't be mended. Because it's not split. Right? Like, the heart is, yes, it's got a crack right down the middle. But it's still there. Like, it's still held together. Maybe it's held together through sweat and tears. Maybe that's the type of energy that needs to go into mending it. But to me, it's it's not completely broken. Otherwise, the heart would be separated. And it's not. But let's see what the angels have to say with that. Complete opposite of a broken heart. <laughs> Nine of Ariel. This is a great card. It comes out very light, actually, with this lighting. Uh, your dreams are fulfilled. Hard work leads to great success, a love for the beautiful things in life. This is very much like the, uh, what is it, the Nine of Cups or the Ten of Cups in um, a regular uh, tarot deck. Like it says, I feel like you can take this card li literally, wishes fulfilled. Of course it says, hard work, the second line here, hard work leads to great success. So you have to decide if you want to put in the work to get the abundance that's beyond the gate. And the abundance that you do have, basically at your doorstep, right there at the gate, okay? And the abundance and the awesome life that is at hand. So that's the decision you need to make. Now it's interesting because, oh, I dropped a card. It's interesting because I'm looking at the numbers here. Nine card, nine card. Also, however, a 30 or a three, a three. And then I'm looking at this last card here, which is a 33. <laughs> Let me look at the others. There's also another one. The, pr the prison waif is a 31. Okay, so you have another three there. Uh, the Desert Prince is a 19, which actually has a 9 in it anyway. Uh, threes are all about coming together. They're all about coming together. It, harmony. Nines are about ending. You need to decide what you want to end. The past. Letting go of the past. Or the present. Present moment with the situation. This romantic or just this energy that you're dealing with right now. The last card here, we have the camel boy, small steps asking for help. With a 33, which if you reduce it down to a single digit is a six. Six is all about love. 
which generally comes before or after a broken heart. That's usually the one way people get a broken heart is through love, right? But I look at small steps, taking baby steps. Like I said, not everything comes to you right when you want it to. Not usually anyway. <laughs> and especially when it comes to a relationship because you're dealing directly with another person, with another personality, with energy, another energy, trying to mesh the two. That's difficult. That's not the easiest thing in the world. And no couple is going to tell you that their relationship has been easy. None. Not a single one. I'm idealistic when it comes to love. I'm pretty idealistic, but mm -mm. no, no, no. That's where my realism comes in. No relationship is easy all the time. It takes work. But the two people have to work at it. They have to want to work at it. If you're stuck being the same way that you were from the past, it's not going to work for you anymore. It's time for you to level up. And I feel this is for both of you. You watch this video and possibly your divine counterpart that the two of you need to level up and you need to be on the same level on the same page. All right. So this week ahead feels like it could be a lot of work. You really have to decide if if you want to let things go. OK. And in which case, kind of continue this broken heart for a little bit. This so nine of my, um, five of Michael, which five, by the way, is all about um, change, whether good or bad, but change. Uh, this situation doesn't serve you, right? Clearing away, releasing your attachment to the outcome, which that's a lot harder for people to do, right? We want, we have plans. <laughs> we have our own plans, but let's be serious. The universe has a grander plan for all of us, so our own plans never go according to plan, right? But you have to decide if you want to let this go, right? Or take the small steps that's required to get this. To get these awesome cards. I'm not in the middle. Let's get these awesome cards, okay? So that's the decision I feel like I feel like there's a decision that needs to be made and it will be made this week it will be made this week um, keep like Michael says here release your attachment to the outcome so keep your options open keep your mind open keep your heart open on how this situation will be healed it will be healed one way or another, and I do feel that, okay? I do feel that. So for those who had questions in regards to love, this reading was all about love. So it, uh, you could actually also relate this, though, to, um, I feel like, um, a familial relationship as well, or just a friendship as well, not just romantic love, okay? But so this energy of this is dealing with another person. I'll say that the energy of this this week is dealing with another person, someone who means something to you, but you have to really decide if you're willing to put the work into it or not and just kind of let things be and then see where life takes you. But don't attach yourself to the outcome or of how you really want things to go. Just be open to whatever spirit, the universe, angels, guides, want to help you with and you know be open to their assistance so okay i hope you've all enjoyed this reading um i don't feel the need to pull any more cards i feel like this is pretty straightforward and i actually feel like the energy of this it was sort of on the heavier side more so than usual right but i feel like you just have to make a decision you just have to make a decision on what you want and what you're willing to work for and if you're not willing to work for it is the answer. All right. So good luck, everyone. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you guys next time. Bye.